Deep beneath London, eight colossal tunnel boring machines are carving through Earth that hasn't been disturbed for centuries. But here's what nobody expected. One wrong move could bring down buildings worth billions. This isn't just construction. This is the most dangerous engineering gamble in European history. London is dying a slow death by congestion. Every single day, 11 million journeys crush through a transport network that's gasping for air. The London Underground, built 150 years ago, carries 3.5 million passengers daily, far beyond anything its Victorian creators ever imagined. Engineer Camilla Barrow experiences this nightmare firsthand. London's a fantastic place to live. Everyone wants to be here, she explains. But catering for these people in terms of transportation is critical. And as you can see right now, it's bursting at the seams. Nine million people call London home. 31 million visitors flood in annually. The city covers 1,600 square kilometers of pure chaos. Something had to give. But wait, there's something I haven't told you yet about what lies beneath London's streets. Something that makes this entire project seem absolutely impossible. The underground labyrinth operations executive Michael Bryant reveals the terrifying truth. London's infrastructure is 300 years old and underneath London is a veritable labyrinth of tunnels for all sorts of purposes. It literally looks like a hairnet that's been screwed up. The reality is even worse than you think. Massive buildings like the Shard have foundation piles driven 20, 30, even 40 meters deep into the chalk. Threading new tunnels through this mess, Bryant describes it perfectly. It really is like threading a needle. Here's where it gets insane. 10,000 workers are spread across 40 construction sites, attempting Europe's biggest construction project. They're creating 118 kilometers of network passing through 40 stations, with 42 kilometers of freshly dug tunnels woven through existing infrastructure. The cost, a staggering 15 billion pounds. But here's the retention bomb, I promise. There's one station that required engineers to do something so audacious, so seemingly impossible, that failure would have meant financial catastrophe for London's most powerful financial district. The water station, defying the impossible at Canary Wharf, Canary Wharf, one of the world's leading financial districts. The problem, all of the land is full, explains the project team. So the only place to do it was in the water. Think about that for a second. They needed to build a 250 meter long underground station in water, 28 meters below water level. The option of failure simply did not exist. How do you create something that massive underwater without destroying a financial district worth billions? The answer came from ancient Rome. Ancient wisdom. Professor Rhys Morgan stands in the rushing waters of Rome's river Tiber examining a structure that's withstood 2,000 years of floods, earthquakes, and wars. The Pont Fabricius, built in 62 BC, still stands today. It's amazing that they were able to build this bridge thousands of years ago in this torrent. Morgan marvels as water crashes around him. The foundations must be extraordinary to deal with that river. The Roman secret? The coffer dam. Here's how it worked. Roman engineers drove timber piles in a ring into the riverbed. A second, larger ring encircled the first. They packed clay between the piles, creating a watertight seal. Then, and this is the genius part, they removed all the water from inside, creating a dry workspace in the middle of a flowing river. Roman engineering at its best, Morgan concludes. They really did make the impossible possible. But modern London engineers took this ancient technique and scaled it up beyond anything the Romans could have imagined. The Silent Revolution. At Canary Wharf, engineers drove 482 meters of tubular steel piles into the dock floor, creating a state-of-the-art coffer dam vastly bigger than anything used at Pont Fabricius. But there was a problem. Traditional coffer dam construction involves hammering steel into the ground, creating massive noise, vibration, and dust. When your neighbors are major financial institutions with sensitive trading floors worth billions, that's not an option. The solution? A revolutionary Japanese machine called a Geekin. Instead of hammering, this machine crawls to the dock bed and uses powerful hydraulics to silently twist and push piles into the ground. It then crawls across, secures itself to those piles as anchors, and pushes in the next one. The result? We went for the first three years of the project without a single complaint from any of the neighbors. Once the walls were complete, 
They removed 98 million cubic meters of water equivalent to 40 Olympic swimming pools. They excavated 300,000 tons of material, reaching solid foundation 18 meters below. This 500 million pound station will handle 24 trains per hour, carrying 68,000 passengers daily. Four floors below water, one at water level, two above, plus a roof garden. But creating this mega station was just the beginning. The real challenge? Threading 42 kilometers of tunnels through London without bringing down a single building. The settlement threat. Here's what nobody tells you about massive underground excavation. As you dig, the surrounding earth resettles. This creates settlement troughs. If these troughs increase, building foundations shift. When foundations shift in a city like London, structures worth millions can collapse. Finsbury Circus represents the nightmare scenario. This little oasis in the city of London is surrounded by old, sensitive, listed buildings. This is a real historical center of London, explains the engineering team, and it has to be protected. How do you tunnel beneath priceless historical buildings without destroying them? The answer came from an 1802 French harbor that was literally falling apart. The harbor rescue doctor Reese Morgan stands at Dieppe Harbor on France's northern coast, investigating a crisis from the early 1800s. The harbor's crucial sluice gate had stopped working, devastating the local economy. The problem was erosion. Water flowing under the gate's foundations was washing away the softer soil, destabilizing the entire structure. French civil engineer Charles Bayraud had an inspired solution. He drilled holes five feet deep through the foundations down into the eroded soil. Then came the genius part using what he called a blow pump. He forced clay grout through the holes under pressure. The grout spread beneath the masonry foundations, filling gaps created by erosion. When it set hard, the foundations were stable again. This was the world's first injection, grouting a technique used in civil engineering projects across the globe today. But Crossrail engineers took Bayroad's 200-year-old innovation and created something extraordinary. The Digital Guardian, modern, Crossrail engineers develop the world's most sophisticated building protection system. It starts above ground with high-tech surveying instruments called Automatic Theodolite Systems, ATS. These devices fire beams of light at reciprocal prisms mounted on buildings across London. Computer software continuously measures the beam angles. If angles change too much, indicating foundation shift, the system triggers immediate response. Below ground, purpose-built grouting tunnels run parallel to construction. At three meter intervals, injection pipes fan out above the construction work and below delicate buildings. Principal engineer Cliff Kettle explains the process. Grout comes via the injection line from the piloted pump. We'll isolate the individual sleeve. This rubber sleeve will push open, the grout will exit here and fracture the ground. Up to 25 liters of grout are forced through rods into ground fissures, leveling foundations and lifting buildings back into place. The results are staggering. Some of the facades of these buildings here are 70,000 tons. We see on a daily basis that just injection of maybe three or four cubic meters of grout can move that building several millimeters. Spanning five years, it's the biggest compensation grouting project the world has ever seen. There are many locations across Crossrail where the excavation couldn't have been completed without the protection provided by compensation grouting. But protecting buildings is one thing. Converting raw tunnels into a high-tech rail network requires innovations that would make a taxidermist proud. The Cement Gun Revolution. At Chicago's Field Natural History Museum, science administrator Mark Alvey reveals an unlikely engineering hero. Carl Akeley, the museum's chief taxidermist from 1896 to 1909, created revolutionary sculpting techniques for his famous fighting bull elephants. Akeley's search for lifelike perfection led to a breakthrough. Traditional hand painting of fake rocks was tedious and uneven. His solution? A spray gun that delivered much more consistent results. When the museum director asked Akeley to fix crumbling walls on a larger scale, he rose to the challenge. Initial attempts to shoot hydrated plaster under pressure clogged the hose. Ackley's game-changing solution, shoot dry plaster through one hose that meets a jet of water under pressure in another, mixing at the nozzle. He'd created the world's first cement gun. This technique transformed construction worldwide. Used for everything from architecture to pool lining and cliff stabilization, at Crossrail, engineers use a supersized automated version of Akeley's machine. Pre-mixed wet concrete called shotcrete is pumped through the system. At the nozzle, high-pressure air accelerates the mix toward excavated surfaces. 
These machines allow you to pump for up to maybe 60 tons an hour, explains the team. The shotcrete contains small, high tensile steel fibers acting like micro-scale reinforcing bars. This technique rapidly stabilizes freshly excavated ground, forming permanent tunnel linings across 42 kilometers of network. But with tunnels complete, the massive challenge remained. How do you efficiently install tens of kilometers of rail track throughout this underground maze? The railroad race architectural historian Jen Massar stands in California, investigating one of America's most audacious projects. On July 1, 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed the Pacific Railway Act, authorizing two companies to build 1,800 miles of railroad between California and Nebraska. The incentive was massive, $32,000 per mile. Union Pacific started east moving west. Central Pacific started west moving east racing across the continent toward each other. Union Pacific workers soon laid 4.2 miles of track daily, thanks to a method devised by brothers Jack and Dan Casement. Fresh from the Civil War, they ran track operations with military precision. Their innovation? An entire moving city. Locomotives pulled sleeping cars, dining cars, and kitchens, providing everything for thousands of workers. But the real genius was in their cart design. Each cart had iron bars along front and back allowing rails to slide to the edge. Rollers positioned rails right into place, sliding them directly onto ties. Those saved seconds added up across the entire project. Workers split into two teams. The first used horses and wagons to deliver sleepers, laying them with tongs. The second crew lifted rails onto carts two men front, two men back pushing the cart to the front line. When positioned, front workers grabbed rails with tongs and pulled them off, while back workers aligned them. The foreman would yell, good iron, and the cart moved forward. Behind the cart, strappers spliced rails at joints. Spikers secured rails to sleepers with spikes. Empty carts were pushed to the line's end and tipped up, making way for fresh rail cars. Central Pacific adopted the technique. By May 10th, 1869, just five years after starting, the crews met and planted a golden spike, completing one of the world's greatest engineering achievements. The 21st Century Transformer. Crossrail engineers took those pioneering methods and created 21st century marvels. The multi-purpose gantry, MPG. A real-life transformer costs one million pounds each. Four were designed specifically for Crossrail. These modernized versions of Casement Brothers trolley cars drag 108 meter long steel rail sections into position, placing them on tunnel floor sides. You've got approximately 47 kilometers along welded rail, so a large amount of track we need to install. Next, sleepers are positioned between rail sections. This MPG can lift up 28 sleepers at one go and position them in exactly the correct location. Across the project, 70,000 sleepers. Finally, these versatile machines lift rails onto sleepers and pour concrete to secure them. The MPGs are very versatile. They can go up and down and they can move in and out. You've got one wheel up on the platform, one on the upstand. They enable us to work around this challenging environment. Thanks to these 21st century tools, tunnel fit-out teams prepared to welcome the first trains in 2018. But building a network this complex is one thing. Safely transporting 200 million annual passengers requires looking to an unlikely source of inspiration. The Coney Island Connection engineer Michael Tobias traces Coney Island's hidden role in modern engineering. Once America's biggest attraction, its rival parks race to outdo each other with daring rides. But in 1891, inventor Jesse Wilford Reno unveiled something far more lasting. The world's first working escalator. His inclined elevator, a sloped walkway with wooden cleats and comb-like prongs, wowed crowds and caught New York Railway's attention. Soon, Reno's design entered the city's transport system. Elevator pioneer Elijah Otis later refined it by adding steps, combining both men's ideas into today's escalator blueprint. Macy's flagship store still houses the last wooden step escalators from 1927 ingenious machines that inspired every design that followed. When you look at the finished Elizabeth line today, it's amazing to think this engineering marvel exists at all. Over 100 million working hours completed, thousands of workers overcoming impossible challenges, billions of pounds transforming London forever. From ancient Roman coffer dams to French harbor grouting, from American railroad innovation to taxidermy techniques, every breakthrough built upon the past while pushing boundaries beyond what anyone thought possible. 
If you think of all the thousands of people that worked on this project, the billions of pounds spent constructing it, the challenges we've managed to overcome, I think it would be a fantastic achievement. It's a real feat for the UK rail industry. The $17.7 billion gamble succeeded. London's transportation crisis finally has an answer. The impossible became possible through human ingenuity, determination, and the courage to attempt what others said couldn't be done. What other impossible projects do you think humanity should tackle next? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one. If this story of engineering triumph inspired you, smash that like button and subscribe for more incredible tales of human achievement. Hit the bell icon so you never miss our latest discoveries. Share this with anyone who loves engineering marvels or thinks big problems need bold solutions. Until next time, keep dreaming impossible dreams.